what is this gooey mess of a rice bowl? I know it looks like some strange combination of like minced beef plus sticky rice, but what actually happened is pretty interesting. So for the first time, Korean scientists grew beef cells inside rice grains to make this sort of new hybrid food. But how exactly did they blend together this animal plus plant to make a new superfood? And maybe more importantly, will people eat it? Now this study caught my eye for a very specific reason. Instead of saying like, we're gonna culture beef cells and try to make, you know, something familiar to people, we're gonna make it into a steak, a hamburger, something people already love. They went the exact opposite direction and were like, we're gonna do something crazy, something you've never seen before. And here we are with rice that has been infused with beef cells. Now, I know there's going to be some haters out there because this looks like Franken food. We shouldn't be eating this. This is not what our grandparents ate. Yes, but we don't live in your grandparents' world and our current food supply is unsustainable. It creates a huge amount of greenhouse gas emissions. We take more from the soil, more from the environment, more from planet Earth than is sustainable in the future and the population is already growing. So we can't live in our grandparents' world. It's not gonna happen. And let me throw a quote at you from one of the lead authors. Our goal is to develop novel hybrid foods that have a high nutritional value and sustainability beyond the value of meat. And what he means by hybrid food, if you've never heard hybrid food, he's just saying we made a food product that's plant plus animal. It has plant and animal nutrition that we need. So it's maybe a very sustainable way to get all the nutrients or most of the nutrients we need in a day. How exactly was this done? Let's dig into it. Step number one is to actually coat the rice grains with this edible mixture of fish gelatin and a food enzyme called transglutamase. Now these components were picked for a very specific reason. Let's talk about gelatin first. Now you might be wondering why specifically fish gelatin? And that's because if they source the gelatin from cows, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of culturing beef cells outside of a cow. But why gelatin? What's special about gelatin in general? Well, gelatin has a specific reaction with amylose. Amylose is part of starch. It's a molecule that makes up the starch. And we know that gelatin can hydrogen bond to form a network with these amylose molecules. This makes the rice grain an even better scaffold by adding all these additional networks. Then that enzyme transglutamase was added to make an even stronger network because the transglutamase is known for linking together gelatin molecules to make much bigger gelatin network. So by adding this edible coating, we're really adding a lot of surface area, a lot of networks, a lot of nooks and crannies where these bovine cells can sort of latch onto, grow and replicate. Then the bovine muscle and fat cells, so two different types of cells, the fat is really responsible for like the marbling on traditional meat. So the cells were added to the rice grains in this liquid sloshy medium and allowed to grow. But what is really interesting to me about using the rice grains as like the scaffold to sort of allow the cells to adhere and grow on it and duplicate is that it not only serves as the scaffold, but also as a nutrition source for the cells. The cells need vitamins and minerals and growth factors to continue replicating. So actually the rice, it serves two purposes, which is pretty cool. And also one side note here, I want to comment on the pink color because at first I was like, wow, it kind of, this like hybrid rice beef situation looks actually like a cut of meat. It's like pinkish red. But the reason it is actually pink in this case is simply because one of the ingredients in that liquid medium is a peach. Ooh, a peach. Hmm. No. Is a pH indicator called fennel red. So it's really only this pinkish color because of this ingredient that was added simply to measure the acidity 
of the broth. It's not like anything from the beef cells itself is lending that pinkish color. Oh, also one other detail I want to mention, there's like one fatal flaw with this ricey beefer, beefy rice, whichever you want to call it. And this is the flaw of all cultivated or cultured meat so far is that typically the cells need a ingredient called fetal bovine serum to grow. Now, I'm not gonna get too in the nitty gritty details of fetal bovine serum because if you can tell by the name, it's not a great ingredient to use. Basically, you have to have a cow fetus and you withdraw the blood and you take a portion of that blood. It's called fetal bovine serum. It has a lot of growth factors that uh, cow cells need to grow. So it's often used in these cultured meat situations to help the beef cells grow, even though the beef cells are outside of a cow. They're in a Petri dish. At this point, I am not super worried about fetal bovine serum because there's so much research and money and resources being poured into this area of research so that cultured meat does not have to rely on an ingredient that comes from cow fetuses because that defeats the whole purpose of cultured meat where we want to make meat products but not have to slaughter millions of animals every year just for us to eat. What about the texture of this new hybrid rice? So they saw a couple differences and they first looked at the rheology of the new product. This basically measures the solid-like versus liquid-like properties of a food product. And Rheology and I, we have a bit of a love-hate relationship. I did a lot of Rheology for my PhD, and it actually was the uh, one time I pulled an all-nighter. I do not recommend zero out of zero, do not pull all-nighters. Not only does that night really suck because you're really tired, but also it takes you like a week to recover from an all-nighter. Do not recommend. But what they saw on the rheology data is that the G prime, that is the solid-like properties where G double prime is the liquid-like, the hybrid rice had a higher G prime, meaning it's more firm-like or harder than the control rice. And this makes sense for a couple reasons. First, remember we added that fish gelatin and the transglutamase, which added more networks with the starch. But also we added those beef cells, we added the muscle and fat cells, so an additional component that particularly when cooked, the proteins will denature, the actin and myosin proteins in the muscle will denature, and also lead to a harder, more solid-like rice grain. The researchers also did some quick texture analysis, another test I've done so many times, and again, this just reiterated that the hybrid rice is harder, it's firmer, but interesting, interestingly, it's also a bit more brittle. Let's go check out the nutrition of this rice-infused beef because upon first look, I was like, wow, but then I kind of thought about it deeper and now I'm a little disappointed. So let me know what you think. So this new product has 8% more protein and 7% more fat compared to the regular control rice. This means that eating 100 grams of the hybrid rice would be equivalent to eating 100 grams of the normal rice plus one gram of beef brisket. Now I don't have beef brisket at home, but to me, one gram doesn't seem like that much. But of course, I think this is really like the first draft of this hybrid rice, right? These researchers, they're gonna go on to optimize so many things like how can we grow the muscle and fat cells better? Can we grow them more dense? Is there any nutrients we're missing that they actually really need to up the protein or fat content to what we want? So really, I expect this to be revised and revised until we see an even bigger difference in the nutrition. Of course, I have to touch on the sustainability of this new product because that's the whole idea behind it is it's higher nutrition and more sustainable than the food supply we have today. I do just wanna say one caveat, of course we cannot tell the future with 100% certainty, so these are just estimations. But for every 100 grams of protein generated, it's estimated that the hybrid rice would release less than 6.27 kilograms of carbon dioxide, where we know beef would release about 50 kilograms of carbon dioxide for the same amount of protein. So that's a huge, a significant decrease in the amount of emissions. In the terms of how long does production take, that raising a cow for protein, this takes at least one to three years. Compare that just to be like normal rice, which typically takes 95 to 250 days to grow. 
We then need to tack on about 10 extra days to make this hybrid rice because it took about nine to 11 days for the bovine cells to grow and proliferate to make that hybrid rice. So not only is this new product more sustainable, the production phase is also much shorter than how we typically raise cattle currently. If you enjoyed this futuristic look into our food supply, you should also check out my video on the top five food trends for 2024.